to our top story of the evening. NATO leaders announcing they will invite Ukraine to join the military alliance, quote, when the allies agree and conditions are met. Now, the announcement comes after President Biden really rejected the notion that Ukraine should join while in the middle of this ongoing war. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky tweeting in response, quote, it's unprecedented and absurd when a time frame is not set neither for the invitation nor for Ukraine's membership, while at the same time vague wording about conditions is added even for inviting Ukraine. Uncertainty is weakness, and I will openly discuss this at the summit. In fact, President Zelensky is scheduled to meet with President Biden at 3.45 p.m. local time in Vilnius, Lithuania tomorrow. That's basically 8.45 a.m. local here. Uh, former U.S. Ambassador to NATO and former Special Representative for Ukraine, Kurt Volker, joins me now. Uh, Ambassador, it's good to see you. Thanks for coming on. So, you know, I'm listening to, look, I, I spent six months in Ukraine. I covered the war. Um, certainly, I, I developed a, a great respect for the folks there. That said, the United States has already provided over $110 billion to Ukraine. And there are many who believe that if it wasn't for America's military, financial, and political support, the war would have gone in a much different direction for Ukraine and for President Zelensky. So my question to you, sir, is President Zelensky asking for too much at this point? Is this now a question of his ego and not of the fight and justice anymore? What do you think? Well, yeah, no, thanks. First off, you are absolutely right when you say that Ukraine would not be there without the support the United States has given. Uh, that is absolutely clear. Uh, it has been transformative. Why did we give that aid to Ukraine? Because it was important to us to see that Russia didn't just stamp out a free country in Europe uh, and that they were given the means to defend themselves. And remember, we're not out there with our troops fighting for Ukraine. They're defending themselves. So when it comes to NATO, I think Zelensky's question is right. What are we not doing <laughs> that NATO members would do? No, we are fighting on the front lines against Russia, defending freedom in Europe. That's what you want NATO members to do. And we're grateful for the aid, but we're capable, maybe even more so than some of the existing allies. So what, what is this about new conditions? Now, one other thing, though, I think it's in NATO's interest. Not, forget about Ukraine's interest. It's in NATO's interest to make clear to Putin that he's not going to win the war and that Ukraine will be secure and in alliance in the future because that is the thing that will deter him from future aggression. And we've seen already over the past year what happens when we don't deter Putin. Yeah, well, when, when if ever, does it make sense, Ambassador, for, for Ukraine to join NATO? I, I mean, this has really been, you know, speaking of Putin, a red line for Russia and for Vladimir Putin for many years, even going back to uh, his Munich speech in 2007, you know, warning about NATO's expansion basically to Russia's doorstep. So would Ukraine joining NATO essentially draw us and other NATO countries and NATO members really into, I mean, some, and this may be a little bit of an exaggeration, maybe not, into World War III? Right. Well, this is why no one is saying Ukraine should be brought in today. Uh, not, not even the most ardent supporters in NATO, Poland or the Baltic states, are arguing that NATO should be brought in today. Because that would mean, just as you said, NATO having to join the war to fight against Russia. And that can escalate out of control, and nobody wants that. Uh, so that's not the issue. Right. But we ought to be signaling that when conditions permit, whatever that is, we'll know it when we see it, they're going to join the alliance. Uh, we need to be clear about that, because that will then contribute to clarifying the situation and shortening the war. As Zelensky said, uncertainty or ambiguity in this case is only an encouragement to Putin to keep fighting. Yeah, I, I mean, there's some looking at, at, at Zelensky now and, and just fe feeling like, look, we've given you so much. And, and not only us, you know, other countries yeah. as well. France now giving long range missiles and, and it's starting to become, I guess, tiresome for a lot of people, particularly Americans, when we're, we're seeing how much money is being given. That's a, another topic. Yeah. Um, yeah. I want to get your take, though, your real life, quick. It's your family, it's your lives, it's your country, it's your cities. Of course. You're not stopping sure. anything.
Yeah, absolutely. And and that goes back to my earlier point, you know, when I was on the front lines with these fighters who were defending their towns, their villages, their families, you know, certainly uh, um, you develop a great respect. Even, at, you know, as a journalist, you try to be impartial, but absolutely. Hey, real quick, Ambassador, um, I want to get your thoughts about President Biden in, in, in an interview, I think it was with CNN, said, some are calling it a slip up. He talked about both the U.S. and Ukraine are running low on ammunition. He's taken heat for that. Is it a surprise? Do you think it's fair that he's taking heat, or is it really not exactly a surprise? We kind of already knew this yeah. anyway, didn't we? Right. Yeah, you're exactly right. We did know this already. It's, it's been out there that we, we are depleting our stockpiles, and so that's one of the reasons why we want to move on with cluster munitions. The question here is, what is it useful for the president of the United States to say? That's not a constructive thing to transmit. Oh, we're running low on ammunition. You want to transmit, as he usually does, hey, we are capable of helping Ukraine. We're in this for the long haul. They're going to, and what he doesn't say, but he should, and they're going to win this war. Uh, we are in this to see Ukraine win. Uh, a position of strength, not weakness. Former exactly. U.S. Ambassador to NATO, Kurt Volker, uh, appreciate you coming on. Thank you. Appreciate your insight. Thank you.